Ladies, gentlemen, it's a great honour for me to be stood here this afternoon as the Corps Regimental Sergeant Major for the Royal Marines and join the Royal Marines Association and members of 4-3 Commando for what has been a fantastic weekend. So I've been asked to say a few words about the Corps. And it's been and going to be a busy year as we mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme, the Battle of Jutland and the 60th anniversary of the Suez Crisis. And in every one of these actions, the Royal Marines were present and fought with distinction and bravery. And it was 100 years ago, on the 8th of January 1916 in Gallipoli, that Marine John Clegg wrote in his journal, it was typical of Royal Marines as they were first in on the shore raids. They were amongst the first in during the landings and were now the last to leave. And we could say this has been a unique part of our illustrious nearly 352 years history. But more so, we could relate this to our commando history. Initially, commando troops were raised from the army. But it was in 1942 that Admiral Mountbatten designated Royal Marines to this role. This was a volunteer unit. And the first Royal Marine commandos formed A Company and were then later renamed 40 Commando. As we know, they were trained not far from here, in Aknakari, near where we conducted a very befitting and poignant parade this morning. And it was in November 1945, the decision was made to disband the Army Commandos, and the role was given to the Royal Marines exclusively, and three Commando Brigade, Royal Marines, was formed. Since then, we have fought in every major conflict that this country has been involved with. And as written on the memorial at Speen Bridge, the word commando became feared by the enemy, yet respected by friendly forces. And until this very date, those words still epitomise the Royal Marine Commandos. We are still an organisation that maximises quality, versatility and value. We are always held at very high readiness, with 40% of the Corps being operationally committed or at five days notice to move, which is more than any of the other regular services. At this present moment in time, Royal Marines supply 43% of Special Forces badge manpower, not bad for a corps which today sits at 6,833 strong, which just highlights the quality of our Marines, some of which are stood behind me now. And a couple of weeks ago, this country voted to be an island nation once again. And this country will expect the Royal Navy and its Royal Marines to protect it, as well as project forward to protect our country's interests and our trade routes, 95% of which are moved by the sea. And the Royal Marines will be expected to be at the forefront of these operations. As we sit here this afternoon, our country's interests are being protected by the court. We have Marines on counter-narcotic operations in the Caribbean, on counter-piracy operations and short-term training teams in the area of Somalia and West Africa, with 4-2 Commando designated as the lead unit and 40 Commando in training to take over from them next year. 4-5 Commando are currently deployed in the Mediterranean heavily involved in the migrant crisis. And 4-3 Commando continue to protect our nuclear deterrent, as well as being the most operationally committed commando in the Corps. The Corps is a busy place, and we could not do it without the support of the Royal Marines family. And this is where I look at you. The part the Royal Marines Association and your families play in supporting operations does not go unnoticed by the serving corps. From your magnificent fundraising, which assists the whole corps family in their time of need, to the parcels you send us when we're deployed on operations, and the comradeship of the association. On behalf of the serving corps, I thank you all. Today has been a fine example of harnessing the corps family, with serving Marines, former Marines, and their family and friends and stood behind me now, which demonstrates this. I have the oldest former Marine here, 
And that's former Marine Ray Saunders, who served from 54 to 56. And the youngest serving member, Marine Gary Parker, who passed for duty on the 3rd of June, just over a month ago. <laughs> It's at this point that I ask Marine Parker to propose a toast. <laughs> Sirs, ladies, gentlemen, to the core family. To the core family. Oh. The core will face some significant internal challenges over the next few years, but this is something we have done since our formation in 1664 and is something we will continue to do. However, at this present moment in time, the Corps is in a good place. Recruiting and retention is as good as it's ever been. And in my 29 years service, the Corps is fully manned. The Marines that are serving today are as good as they've ever been, with 40% of recruits being educationally qualified to be officers, and 11% joining up with degrees. This is the type of person that is attracted to our beloved Corps. And what Commando Training Centre are producing is still the best, just as it was when you, former Marines, were passed for duty and joined what was, and still is, the best fighting force in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.